Hi folks, God bless you. It's good to be with you all. It's a glorious summer day. We're in uh, on the border of Chatterton and Werneth. And um, I'm just going to do a bit of talking while I'm driving. Just what's on my mind, my thoughts. So it's random stuff we'll be talking. Oh, what a gorgeous day, absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful day, beautiful. Hope you're okay. So we're off. Thanks for your prayers for going to Holland. It was good. I had a good time. Thanks to the church and, and Frank and the family. Art and the family. I had a good time, so thank you. So uh, I gave a Bible study for the church and then uh, in Holland and uh, we went to Antwerp for a couple of days, which was good. In Belgium and then went to um, come back and then did a talk for the youth on evolution and creation I was a bit too deep I think on the evolution stuff uh, but they watched the video and uh, so that was good I think they got some out of the video and then um, gave a sermon for the church and had a couple of well that was on Sunday and then had a couple of nice boat rides and it's just a very very relaxing time and I really enjoyed it so give me a boost so thanks for all your prayers so we're now uh, in Chatterton now as uh, my home place where I was brought up on the edge of Chatterton uh, this is my old haunt as a kid I used to go on these streets that you're seeing now so oops the trip was good it was a refreshing time blessed time uh, I just want to talk about evolution just for a minute I, I don't believe that evolution is true I think the evidence against evolution is quite clear and I think the evidence is with the issue of the mechanism uh, natural selection and mutation and in order for something good to change a mutation to change uh, DNA structure there has to be billions of mutations and that, those billions of mutations you have to have billions that are actually good mutations that are, that are bad because mutation is a bad thing they're bad but they somehow end up being good so basically mathematically we're talking, you know, Michael Bees mentioned this in an interview he's a top scientist that it's just mathematically 
improbable to the point of ludicrous that mutations are the mechanism that produce the complexity and variety within the DNA human DNA or any DNA so on top of that research in bacteria over like since 1980 to now multiplying it I've not seen that bacteria change into anything else but stay as bacteria then you have information in DNA how does how, where does information come from it comes from a mind then you have the complexity of various parts of the DNA various cells uh, like the flagellum like B has shown that that is an irreducible complexity in other words that there are certain parts within the flagellum that if you take it away it would not be able to function um, and shows you irreducible complexity in other words there's complexity there built in into the mechanism or into the organism so these are undeniable strong arguments against evolution because once if you've got a tank and you knock out the gun you've kind of disabled the tank and my arguments that I've just given you knock out the mechanism evolution and once you knock that out that's it end of story so when the opponent goes to the past and says gives arguments from um, the um, fossil records and all the rest well, if, if, if we've knocked out the mechanism, it's game over. You're just interpreting the past according to a theory that you've not actually proven. That's not demonstrable. That's not demonstra demonstrable in time. So. so those are my sort of basic reasons why I don't believe in evolution. The mechanism is flawed more and more scientists are coming to that conclusion that's why there are different new uh, ideas about evolution trying to be developed uh, but scientists can't seem to develop a new a new way of looking at things so but more and more scientists top scientists I mean real top academics like Dr. Sachs are coming on board and realizing that evolution is not tenable and it's not intellectually credible anymore well it never has been intellectually credible and that's my position now there are anomalies there will always be difficulties when you're interpreting the past when we're trying to understand what happened 6,000 years ago it's not easy it's very we only know 1% of the ancient world 1% of knowledge of the ancient world, that's all we know. That's going back 5,000, 6,000 years. So, to say that we know what happened a billion years ago or a million years ago is just nonsense. And there'll always be anomalies or gaps in our knowledge. So people can fight over arguing of the past and its interpretation after 6,000 years. Nobody can prove categorically uh, as far as I'm concerned evolution or any other view really um, but what we can show in time absolutely categorically is that that mechanism is not possible and that the complexity of the human cell speaks of a designer, speaks of a god end of debate as far as I'm concerned so you might say, well, what about dinosaurs? Or you believe in dinosaurs? If, uh, but then again, we found dinosaur blood, even possibly dinosaur tissue, which shows that the Earth is not millions of years old. So, like I said, there are anomalies, there are gaps in our knowledge, and there are anomalies. And that's one that 
is thrown up for the evolutionist. There's also um, academic lies that the evolutionists have been propagating. Um, the moth, peppered moth uh, picture that's put in uh, in uh, textbooks is a lie. It doesn't tell you that that's macroevolution, it's just microevolution. And those moths were killed and stuck on a tree that was exposed years ago, yet they still publish those pictures. The, uh, I think it's Heckel's uh, uh, hierarchy of um, uh, the beginning of, of a birth of a human being and other creatures, and then he compares it. It's been shown that he doctored those pictures, that they're not accurate, yet they've still been published, still been put in evolutionary textbooks. Sorry, it's just the sun's in my eyes. So, that's academic lies being put in textbooks that's never been fully recognised and accepted. Then you have academic freedom. What happened to Michael B when he wrote Darwin's Back Blocks and how he got in, he was dragged into the dole for controversy. Now the judge, he was biased and the press demonised him. Shows you that academic freedom is not there because he got persecuted. A top scientist who has done research, impeccable research, and he was persecuted because he believed in intelligent design. Um, and then the Samothian controversy where the publication of uh, the publication of uh, the head of uh, I think it was Samothian Institute where he wanted to publish intelligent design article and he was an evolutionist at the time and, and they he was kicked out of losing his job because he was trying to encourage academic freedom. So there's no real academic freedom to question evolution on a serious academic level because the thought police come in. So I've given you some very strong arguments about the mechanism and I've given you some thought, food for thought concerning evolution. But I, I don't believe in evolution at all, I think it's absolute nonsense. And also those Christians who go in for uh, a uh, biologos scholars who believe in uh, theistic evolution they say that uh, God uh, didn't create the world in six days but it was millions of years well if you check uh, I think it's in Exodus when he gives the information about the Sabbath it, it quite clearly states that there are six days and then there's the seventh um, so it's very clear about uh, about its the creation was made in six days. It, it emphasizes it in Exodus. Um, and when uh, people go to the ancient Near Eastern literature and say that that's the way to interpret Genesis, well, basically they're using um, they're not allowing Scripture to be the authoritative. Um, the authority in interpreting scripture, they're using things outside scripture as a subordinate on the level authority of the Bible and that's wrong. So it's not it's not a valid method from a, as a biblical theologian. So that's what I think about evolution. Um, what a gorgeous day, absolutely gorgeous. So, um, yeah, so that's evolution. I, I want to talk about uh, mission at the moment. I'm not finding it easy, really. I, I don't know how to go forward because 
many many people know me in Manchester many people come up to me talk to me want to and I, I built a, over the last five years I built a good bridge with people and it's a big ministry of that where many many thousands of people in Manchester know me and I'm able to talk to many many people but I've struggled to get a, a team together that actually want to work as Royal Blood Ministries and so I don't know what God is saying to me and I, I don't know but I, the way things are I can't continue the way things are without a team you know and I don't know how to get a team a team that want to do Royal Blood Ministries I've got people that want to help but they want to do the wrong thing as well and that's very difficult for me when I'm setting up a table and I'm got a mic and I'm doing street preaching. I need a team that are actually buyed into Royal Blood Ministries and I don't know how to get that, how to do that or and, and it's presenting it's presented over the years many many difficulties and it, it continue it continues to be a difficulty now. Um, one way around it is plant a church which I'm not too sure about I don't know where if people join